Hello, I am now making a follow-up video to my last video about framing. And I decided to clear up some things that were a little bit unclear and give you more of the steps, I guess, and show you what, what it looks like in the next part. So, here we go. Well, I figured you probably wouldn't want to watch me sand, and uh, I wouldn't blame you because, as I've mentioned, that's my least favorite part of everything to do. <laughs> I don't like sanding boards, I don't like sanding frames, I just hate it. But on this one, where I wanted it to match this other frame, this black one, um, I needed to sand it because that one was made back when I felt it was necessary to sand and before I kind of figured out my formulation with this red, red clay burnish stuff. Um, and so I, I, I kind of, adopted this method that doesn't necessitate sanding and also I've adopted a style of framing that sort of is a little bit more uh, rustic so it's not quite as mirror polished smooth it looks a little bit more yeah just rustic I guess is the right word <laughs> a little bit more handmade looking so but I will tell you what I did um, so I, I did use two different grades of sandpaper. This may not matter to most of you, but those who are interested uh, might be interested. <laughs> so I started with a 60 grit, which is extremely, extremely rough. And my whole intention was just getting, well, let me show you, probably right here is the, the most obvious, um, where this side wasn't quite lined up and I'd have to have absolutely perfect perfect um, pieces of wood to not have this problem so like 99% of the time this is this is gonna happen where where one side is just gonna be a little bit higher than the other side and this one was quite a bit higher so my intention with, with the rough sandpaper was just to get it get it sanded down as quickly as possible and I took probably at least 10 minutes on this side, just kind of slowly getting into it, getting that to, to gradually incline down to that part where, it, where it's now a smooth, smooth transition. And I did it all around and these two corners didn't really need it and this one wasn't as bad. And then I also always round the edges and that's for two reasons. First of all, so I don't get poked <laughs> and so the, whoever, whoever's hanging the picture doesn't get, get jabbed by it, but also if if something like if you lay it down too hard on the ground or something that that's the first part that's going to get uh, messed up and frames always get dinged up but it's usually on those sharp edges so if I just make the the rounded corner part of the feature of the frame then I have less less problems with that fewer problems with that so I followed that up with with a finer grade of sandpaper um, this is 150 grit and I would I don't need to use um, a higher grade or a, high, a higher grit a, a softer sandpaper because um, first of all my my sealer paint my burnish paint well, I don't know what I call it but um, that stuff the red stuff um, is so thick that it, that it hides those little imperfections so even if I didn't didn't go go finer than this original rough stuff it probably would still be okay it's just that that thick of of a substance that it sort of fills in the crack cracks but where I'd already done most of the work I thought it'd be no big deal to just go over the whole thing kind of just make it smooth and again I was trying to match that frame which is really smooth so now that I've done that I'll just do another coat and you may be asking well why didn't you just sand it before you painted it well it's because I hate sanding so much that I was trying to get away with it. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I tried to do it without, without sanding and realized afterwards that I needed to. I'm always fascinated by smells of, of art products. And this is no exception. It's just got an interesting, unique smell. It's fun to push around. And the, this one is great for brushing on. It, it could also be sprayed on, but um, it doesn't need to be because it's so 
it, it dries relatively fast. It is water-based, but it's slow enough drying that it that it quickly lays flat on its own. So similar to the way that you'd expect an oil-based paint, like an exterior paint, to do. So most of the uh, the brush strokes will will come out of that. And obviously I'm going over the top of another layer. Um, so this is not quite as, as laborious as the first layer, the first coat. But you can see how, how quickly it does go on. It's not... Now I'm not gonna... There was some confusion in the last video about this. Um, I'm actually not going to share my recipe. It's, it's my closely guarded secret. <laughs> And, but I will tell you that you can get away with a lot of things. You could simply just color gesso if you wanted to, and that would work. Like a, like a store-bought acrylic gesso. And I've already told you in previous videos that I sometimes add um, marble dust to my gesso to give it more tooth. And I would suggest that adding marble dust to this gesso is probably a good idea too. So you want it to be, oops, you want it to be porous. And I'll just tell you, if you want to color it this color, um, all you have to do is add concrete colorant. It's the powder version. So that's one of the secret ingredients, but that's, that one's pretty obvious. It's just a colorant. So, I never discussed um, the price savings. So before I finally decided to like get back into to frame making, uh, not, not full time. <laughs> I'd much rather paint than make frames, but um, but I've decided to, to make all my own frames rather than ever purchase a frame again. Because I I looked around at different companies and compared prices and you know basically built built orders on their on their order pages and uh, just kind of compared what I was getting for for how much I was spending and I, I brought my bill up to I don't remember now, but it was probably like five thousand dollars or so. And for that, I wasn't getting that many frames. And I realized that, of course, if I was painting so much that I was, well, okay, let me say this a different way. Because a couple years ago, I actually was painting so much that I was, or I was selling so much that I was selling every single thing that I painted and I there wasn't a single thing left over, really. I mean... Occasionally, there was one left over that took a while longer to sell. But the point being, I would I have been better served by by paying someone else to make my own make my frames instead of making them on my own and you know reserving that time to to just paint and and bring in the money. But I for myself, you know, I'm I'm pretty handy. I I'm not afraid of of trying woodworking things, and I and I really enjoy it. So not everybody is the same, I realize, but I realize that for the time it takes to make one of these things, which my actual hands-on time from beginning to end is maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half, I guess, on a, on a big one, if, and if there's a lot of sanding. But I've gotten it down to where there's probably less than an hour um, on any, any given frame. And for the amount of money I'd be spending on that frame, purchasing it from someone else, I'd probably spend Honestly, for this one, uh, maybe three hundred dollars, and am I making three hundred dollars an hour painting? No, I'm not. <laughs> I would love to, but I'm not making that much. I'm probably making closer to fifty dollars an hour, um, and that was on in a, in a good year. Um, but anyway, so if I so the way I justify it is, if I'm making more per hour than what it costs me to, in time, to, to make these. 
then I might as well pay somebody else to do it faster than me. But since I'm not making $300 an hour, then I am saving that $300. Um, well, minus the cost of the actual materials. And the cost of materials to make an 18 by 24 frame of this particular um, molding, molding style. Uh, I figured it out once. It's about $40. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Huge savings. So roughly $260 savings. Um, and then you minus my $50 an hour. And I still came out uh, $190 ahead by making my own frame rather than purchasing it. So basically, I make more money by making my own frames than I do by painting. <laughs> and uh, for any of you entrepreneurs out there, uh, there's a little hint that maybe uh, you should do that as a side business. <laughs> and I very much um, considered that. In fact, I, I was doing that. I, well, you can't see it and that won't show you because it's private, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but I was paying my kids um, quite a bit of money. Um, and a decent decent wage per hour to make frames and I was of course keeping part of it because it was my you know I came up with the method and um, I was I trained them on it and and I of course purchased all the materials but they were making a pretty good decent decent wage for for working for me and we had plans to turn it into a, a good business and once once our oldest daughter um, comes back home um, in uh, about a year now, um, then uh, she'll be, she, she will probably start, start it up again. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a bad cold. <clears throat> had it for a couple weeks now, so that's why I sound different. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty good business idea and I think we'll just go ahead and uh, do that and offer frames to other people. Um, you can see already that, that this is already drying, you can tell because it's quite matte, and then it's shiny, of course, where it's still wet. And can you see, like if you move it around, you can see how flat it, it is, where there's not any, not very much anyway, of uh, brush strokes. And actually, there are a few uh, little dots, it looks a little bit sandy around here. That would be really easy to knock down with, with a fine sandpaper, once it's totally dry, of course. Or if it doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. Um, it doesn't bother me. In fact, I quite like it because once I finish it with the black, uh, I, I usually, well, I always sand it very, very lightly. I actually use fine steel wool at the end and any part that's raised will show through a little bit of that red. And I kind of like that texture, textural quality. So since it's a really, dismal stormy day outside right now. I'm not going to um, show you that part just yet, but I will make another video of the, the final painting and, and then finishing of this frame uh, as soon as the weather's good, which will be just a few days from now. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Um, little, uh, I mean, hopefully I didn't miss any other questions that were posed, but if I did, I'll answer them in, a, in one second. <laughs> okay, a few other things I just remembered or realized. Um, some people had asked about what these little clamps do in the corners. Um, one person even said that it would, I would ruin the edges and that I should use a different type of clamp. Well, first of all, well, you can see that little tiny divot there. But with two coats of this gesso stuff, um, it's really not noticeable at the end. And that brings me to another thing, which is the name of the clamps that I that I said I was using. I, I called them C-clamps. That's totally wrong. <laughs> I know what a C-clamp is, and these are not those. Um, these are called corner uh, spring clamps. And I, I did mention that in the... In the uh, description of the other video, but I know I don't always read the descriptions of videos. So anyway, for those of you who are looking for them, 
I will place the uh, the link to this exact one exact set that I found on Amazon years ago, but I, I found it again. So, so you can buy the same one if, if you want to. It was a pretty good deal. 25 or 30 dollars, I think. Something like that for the whole set. Um, if the little divots do bother you, obviously you can uh, fill it in with something. Not a big deal. Um, also, I have used the the kind of clamps that like ratchet and they're all connected to each other and they, they go in all four corners at the same time. Um, and I haven't, I don't claim that I've used all different brands or all different styles of, of those, those things, but, uh, but the ones that I did use didn't work as well as these ones. So anyway, for what, what that's worth, obviously, if you have your own shop, you, you're probably already set up with stuff. Um, and I would just suggest using those things. <laughs> and then the final thing is, let's show you that I ordered this this molding totally ready to to be you know to, for the picture to go in for the painting to go in so it has that I think it's called a rabbit um, cut out there if you're having trouble finding someone that'll make the molding for you like a shop or something I don't know what I would suggest other than just maybe ask around see if there's maybe even a um, a high school shop class that would be willing to make these things for you and honestly if I were in high school still, and somebody wanted me to make pictures frames for them in a, in a wood shop class, I'd be thrilled because it was really hard to come up with projects to do <laughs> for the grade <laughs> back then. And so you might be doing some high school student uh, a favor by asking them to, to make frame molding for you. I remember back in high school asking somebody to make a, a 30 by 40 frame for me and I couldn't believe how expensive it was, it was $25. <laughs> but that was for me who didn't have a job at the time. <laughs> But now I realize what a, what a screaming deal that was. Okay, well, that's it for now. I will talk to you again very shortly. Enjoy painting and let me know if you have any questions. See ya.